I've only been fly fishing um, for about 10 months now and I've learnt most of what I know from videos uh, mainly on YouTube uh, done by seasoned, experienced anglers. Um, for those who just get into it as well, um, the ones I'd recommend personally that I enjoy watching and they've got really good content is Reese Fishies, Sean Fishies, UK Fly Fisherman, Trout Fly Fisherman, North East Trout Flies, Tim Joyce and Welsh Fly Fish. Um, obviously there's quite a few others out there watching but those ones that uh, you know personally I've subscribed to and uh, you know got some good content so I thought I'd have a go put a video together myself um, but with a slight difference obviously most of the videos I've watched have been done by you know good seasoned <laughs> uh, educated anglers um, I'm gonna do one from a novice's point of view um, with where I'm gonna go through the tactics that I'm gonna use um, beforehand and then Hopefully, people who are new to fly fishing can watch it and get some tips. Uh, but also, uh, I could hopefully learn myself if there's some guys out there with the, a lot more experience than me that want to sort of comment and give me pointers um, or constructive criticism either, even. Uh, that's fine, you know, that's great. Also, that's hopefully, gonna get some um, fishing footage and content uh, in the video as well. Um, tomorrow, we get to go back to Elodine Lake, so we're finally reopening. Um, after three months, so they've stocked up heavily. Um, Elderdine's uh, probably my favourite um, place to fish. Granted, I've only been to four places so far, but it's a great setup there. They're lovely people. Uh, it's a perfectly well well run, uh, and there's some uh, there's some cracking fish in there. So I'm hoping it'll be a good opportunity to get some uh, content and some footage, uh, get some takes. The only drawback is that there are 20 miles an hour winds forecast tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to go through my setups now um, and how I intend to fish them. Um, and then I will obviously try and talk during the during the video um, footage whilst I'm at Elodine, but with the, uh, with the high winds, it might not be too great. So I'm going to go through it all now and then add some uh, fishing content to it afterwards. When fishing, I usually like to set up three rods. I find this gives me a lot of variation with tactics and, and obviously flies that I can um, get out to the fish uh, in a you know in a quick manner as well, save me having to sort of keep resetting up. So uh, on the first rod tomorrow, I'll have the intermediate line with a damsel and a black snake. Apologies if I get some of these names wrong. I'm still new to, to the names of the flies, but I believe that's what uh, what they're called. Um, and obviously with the intermediates, I'll try that sort of varying the retrieves, slow retrieve, fast retrieve, and uh, sort of try and find what's working and uh, obviously at different depths. Uh, on the second rod, I'm going to have a, it's a sink tip, floating sink tip line. Now I'm going to start off with two cormorants and a weighted blob. Now I find this is quite good because obviously the blob gets, uh, gets them down um, and you can cover obviously three different depths there uh, but also sometimes if the fish are in the are high in the water um, I'll take I'll, I'll take the VD blob off and, uh, and put a fab on uh, you know and sort of put a washing line turn it into a washing line um, setup uh, also if there's a hatch on later on uh, I might change over to I've got one on here three buzzers uh, like a black bloodworm type at the bottom and then a couple of black ones further up uh, and then on the third one uh, floating line with a dreaded bong <laughs> uh, this will probably be where I'll start off with I like starting off with a blood worm this time here I think that's work for me um, so I have a blood worm on the point and an orange weighted blob uh, on the dropper um, again if that's not working then I can quickly change over and put something brighter on if I want to go for like an orange blob, and uh, I think that's called a ecstasy bug, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, um, those are the two that uh, you know I'll probably start with uh, tomorrow and see how I get on. Um, another quick point to these: a couple of things I've invested in um, farm spools. I find it's a great way of getting all, all manner of different flies ready to go. 
and if any of these aren't working whether it's on the sinking line the, the sink tip i can quickly just snap it off and turn another one on and i've got you know i've got a different tactic within within minutes um you know and uh, i just find it you know it's a good time saving uh, exercise so that's how we're going to start out so let's get it all packed away and see you on the bank tomorrow right then i've just watched uh, some of the videos back that i've just uh, put together um and i've noticed which i didn't realize at the time there's a a weird noise that you might you may hear in the background i just wanted to apologize in advance um the culprit is over here Oh Dougie, I do apologise for his snoring, I've sent, sent him to sleep. But um, yeah, if you hear a funny noise in the background, it's the dog snoring. So here we are. It's the line. Got the three rods set up. I'm going to start off on the float. Right, so on here, got the pink blob, not orange as I said yesterday, a bit of a mare, and the old blood worm, so about five foot and three foot. Obviously the idea of the bung is to fish static, but when you go a windy day like this, it, uh, it doesn't stay very static, uh, so... Uh, It will tend to get quite a lot of movement in it. Just ever so slowly, just retrieving the lining just to keep, uh, just to keep touch with it. Oh, there you go, a little nod then. Someone's had a look at it. And we're in. Took the bloodworm. joking <laughs> it's come off <laughs> oh well great great start to the day aid <laughs> oh and there the old man's in talk to me if any hours Well, there you go, I had mine on the blood weren't quite deep and my dad just had that one on the uh looks like he took it, I think he took his blob about two, three foot down. <laughs> As you can see, landing fish runs in the family. <laughs> There you go. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm getting a nice drift with the wind with this one anyway, but even with, you know, occasionally, did I just give it a quick, a quick pull? Just get the. Uh, just to pull the flies up a bit and then just let them sink back down. Sometimes that triggers a response. <laughs> I'm in the wrong person, around the camp. Right then. We need that catching two on a buzzer. I'm gonna change a bit sooner than I planned to onto uh, onto the cormorant on the sink tip. Um, 
like I showed yesterday, I have got the buzzer set up uh, if we have no drill on this. So we'll give this a give these a try first of all. Let's see if we get on. All right then. I have to be careful with my back cast here because I've got a lot of uh, shrubbery behind me. But uh, so I got that one out all right. So just let it drop down. Now I'm just gonna just a really slow retrieve of this one first of all. Just watch that line. Just ever so slow. Or I've got cormorants or buzzers, I'd start off with the same thing. Oh, oh no. I went. Again. It's a very can't tell you, just a very slow retrieve. Stop bringing this in a bit sooner this time, still relatively slow, but I'm not gonna wait for it to sink as much. Put a pause in that. Speed up again. No pause. Speed up again. Yeah, no. Normally I'd find my cast a lot more than this, but I've got a lot of trees and that behind, so uh, I'm just trying to keep it at an angle. And oh, damn it! <laughs> well, that took it on the drop. Right then, so I've took off the whitey blob and I've put on whatever this is, a more buoyant one. Because I've had, I've had one ticket off the drop. Both of my dads have been about, took it about two foot deep. And I just had one follow it in, so. I'll put one on the surface and then I'll keep uh, those two cormorants pretty shallow. <laughs> I get an 8.6 I think right then tried that one because a few a couple of we'd had a couple of gears at the floats but uh, nothing happening there so I'm going for something a bit more discreet um, don't know what it's called might be an emerger is it but basically the idea is to keep it on in the water <laughs> ah, looks it. Just 
just looking down there, the chopper is I think just had a double and the way it went, absolutely smashed it. I mean, then it's like massive size wise, just cracking fights, just uh, for about three pound, I think. But it's bigger than the one you had. <laughs> I know, I say, you know, this one's come off as well. Great fighting fish. Well, that was a nice take then. Just a nice steady retrieve. So they're bringing it in. It's absolutely smashed it. Cracking fish. Well, I hope that come on camera anyway, because that's uh I wanted to try and get some takes on camera today uh, I on the float, which uh, unfortunately I lost, and there's two on the uh, on the cormorant. That one took the cormorant, the uh, second one down. So, uh, always nice to get the first fish in. And more importantly, to pull one back on the hard man, because even now the idea of coming today wasn't to... Uh, have a competition with him that's probably how it's going to turn out because <laughs> we're both as bad as each other yeah so we'll have a, another cast with this and then i think we'll have a go with the lures and uh try that dams and snake all right so now we've got the damsel and the snake now I've actually got these on an intermediate line I may have to change it from sink tip because they all seem to be near the top but I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll stop bringing them in relatively quick to begin with oh, I'll just move there Yes, straight away. Took the snake. Is. Nice blue, took the black snake. There you go, there's two in. So that's what I was hoping to achieve today. I've had a uh, well, I've lost lost one on the bung, caught one on the cormorant. And another on the snake. That's why I believe um, it's all like fishing with three rods. You know, ch change the tactics really quick. Give yourself as many opportunities as possible. All right then, and try something different here. You know, with this ecstasy bug, I think they are. And I've got two buzzers, uh, an orange one and the green one. I'll put it quite shallow. And 
Again, I just wanna Drink your cup of tea, never fails. Nice one. <laughs> like a torpedo. <sighs> yeah, took took the first dropper, green buzzer. Yep, one on the bung there as well. Well, that's been up for the one I lost on the bung earlier on, so I've had one on each rod now. One on the sink tip with the cormorant, one on the intermediate with the lure, and one on the bung, the float. Obviously, the bung <laughs> is, uh, seems to get a lot of bad press, one thing I've noticed since I started. I mean, when you look at takes like that, you know, I don't really see what the argument is whether, whether I'd had the bung on or, or just free lining it, you know, it's it, it absolutely stripped it. Awful. Edit that bit out. Shocking cast. Well, they're just bringing it in quick so I thought it'd be in a tangle. And it's followed it in. This one I think is tough. The, uh, the ecstasy, ecstasy book or bug or whatever it is on the end this time I think. Nice. Oh, nice and there's me four uh, four trade ticket in a couple of hours. Very nice. 
and here's Martin Phillips decided to join us on this fine and windy day. Hey mate, do you want to say do you want to say hello to the thousands of people? This wind <laughs> Well, just because they show that last one, absolutely awful cast. I was actually bringing it in quickly to uh, to cast it back out, and uh, the fish uh, followed it in. So I think it uh, obviously is a floating line. So I think it shows that uh, it might be worth taking off the intermediate off the other line and uh, fishing the lures on a on a floating line. So they seem to be taking it uh, quite shallow at the moment. But that's what I like about coming here as well to Elodine. It's I've been fishing about an hour and a half. I've had a four fish ticket, got my four fish. In some places, you know, that was it. You have to go home. You know, we, you know, especially like when I'm with my dad and my mate Martin, you know, we like to come out for the day. And it's good that, you know, once you've had your fish, you can, uh, you can still carry on and, uh, you know, go on to catch and release and continue having your day out. You know, I'd uh, be mortified if after tra after travelling here today, you catch your four fish and then you've got to get back in your car and drive home. And, uh, you know, especially um, if you took a day off work or something like that. But I know, you know, I know fisheries do it, and I know they have the reasons for doing it. But um, this, you know, that's what I like about here is, you know, you can have your sporting ticket or you can have your fish ticket, but regardless, you can carry on fishing for the day afterwards. This one looks a good one, Dad. Yeah, he took the damsel. Took the damsel. Oh, it's a lump. <laughs> a bit of that. Dad, can you give me a... Oh, that could be a double. Hang on. That was a nice one on the, uh, on the lure. About nine pound, I think. Not quite a double, nearly. That one took the uh, damsel. And I would start. It's uh, ten to ten. At four fish and a nine pounder. Oh. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm took it on the drop. Ripping the line at me ends. There you go. Now just fast stripping it on the lure. It's a little brown. Yeah. That's a stonking fish that is. What a beautiful fish. Lovely fish, yeah? <laughs> 